Thank you. And um, now we'll go ahead and open up the floor to questions. And just a reminder, folks that are here in person, if you've got a question, if you can please stand up just to make um, it easier to be heard around the room. So questions for any of the presenters? Are, are those continuous profilers at a stage where they can be used for uh, uh, contract conformance? For example, payment cores are used to determine pay factors and it's you know kind of proof in the pudding from coring. But has this has it developed far enough where it can be used as a contract performance uh, tool? So right now, uh, they're still working on it, but not uh, they haven't developed it yet as of now. Uh, the, the issue being like uh, there's production variability. So the frequency of uh, how frequent you need to develop this calibration and uh, even like a half a percent change in directed would result in the, about like one and a half percent difference in the density value. So they're still trying to figure out uh, What's the best approach to develop uh, these calibration models? I can add just a little bit more to it. So as as, as Ram mentioned, it, it's something that's in developmental stage. The work that I showed you with just the subcontract that we have for the food fund. The objective there is really answer the questions that Sam just posed as to what would be at the end of the day, from, from a DOT perspective, what would be the risk, right? So we are really working towards quantifying that as you move from your current approach of using force and doing the densities and then that impacting K factor. If we replace that process with the current process that we have for dielectric measurement and everything considered, variabilities in the measurement system, accounting for production variabilities, would you still have the same level, higher level, or lower level of risk as an agency? And so that's really the question that we are trying to answer. And then to do it, it's, it's the catch 22 situation. So that's why what Food Fund has done is they have actually made it possible for the state to go out and on actual projects run these systems. So we have data where we have the core data and we have this data to be able to answer that. So uh, so that really happened. It kind of got a little bit delayed because of COVID because what the full fund idea was to do a lot of that data collection in 2020 and 21. What's really happening is a lot of collection in 21 and 22 because of all the changes. Uh, but, but that's really the, the outcome of that full fund is to, to get to the point where we can have an effective impact. Well, I'll, maybe it's a follow simple, but I'm interested and I'll apply this to either uh, Ishan or Ram about the dielectric property. I'm just wondering about uniqueness uh, of your measurement uh, and uh, it's calibrated for density, but if you have a small variation in aggregates or, or other, other factors that affect the measurement uh, that may not affect the quality of the pavement, I'm just wondering how how we work to separate that out? Very good question. And, and just, just to expand or elaborate a little bit more on it, just to also make sure that I understood it, it completely, right? Dielectric of any composite, because that's what we are dealing with here, will depend on all the ingredients that you have there. As it happens, luckily or unluckily, the dielectric of has called binder, even if you drastically change the source of binder, change is negligibly just because it's a hydrocarbon based, based material and doesn't really get impacted by it. Aggregate geology is usually the biggest variability factor. So the way it's set up right now, the way the pool fund has approached that is as long as you are not changing the source of your aggregates, in other words, you're using the same pits or same mining locations, you do not need to alter your calibration or alter your relationship because that's really what's controlling. What we did see, and, and, and I, I don't think it was completely clear because I went through it really quickly, is 
it seems that the gradation of the mixture of the size distribution does not seem to impact it. Because if you take the same aggregate source, even geologically, not even the same pit, and you have mixtures that are made a very fine versus very poor, they seem to be tracking exactly along same same lines. Uh, and, and so that's that part of the answer. The other part is that part is the reason why we have also been in parallel working towards developing a model that as an interim, the process is that you establish a calibration curve. What we are moving towards is not needing that, right? Or maybe needing it only once during the mixed design stage and not needing it during production. Um, the, 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 the last part that I'll quickly mention is moisture is the key, right? The biggest challenge that you'd run into this is if there's any water that's present either in your lab compacted sample or in the field, that does impact dielectric measurement significantly. I don't necessarily have a complete answer to that at this point in time, but that's something that at least we all know about pretty well. And then you also have to keep in mind, besides trying to replace the density measurement, a big advantage here is also uniformity. So even if we continue with some limited coring, we are still getting better product because we are able to really look at the uniform. Um, did you want to add any more? Uh, no, uh, not really. Like, uh, uh, maybe I should. The other way I could phrase it is: Do you maybe this is the right terminology? But do you get a lot of? Um, could you get a lot of false positives in a sense where you see that? Oh, it looks like there's a density variation, but it's something else that affected the 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 dielectric measurement. Uh, so that in fact the payment is is quite good. Yeah, like. Uh, Right now, we haven't experienced particularly anything, but like uh, there are some signal interferences. So any antennas nearby or something, they they do uh, traffic uh, yeah, interfere with this dielectric values. So the major issue that we're having right now is like how far do you stay behind the final roller because the roller uses some moisture, like right, compact and like any traces of moisture, even if it rains for like five minutes. It, you, you can't do anything. So you have to wait till it's surface dry. Even though if it's surface dry, there are still some spots that, that may have moisture in there. So that will affect your direct values. So even like additives, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly. We haven't had any issues. Fox sealing, no, we haven't had any issues right now. Thank you. Okay, um, we do, uh, yeah, go ahead and take it. I know you were, and then I've got an online question. Um, it's minus for Julie, and I'm just really impressed to learn about what you're doing at Pittsburgh. And I appreciate the focus on the importance of collaboration and what you focused on. But do you have something to aim at if I were to go look at what your results have, any of your research has shown about? Is there a, a promising package of the best way to do the layering with the concrete on top? Yeah, thanks. Um, definitely. So all of the, the details with respect to uh, the, the technical side, the science side, if you go to the iRISE website, um, that will provide you with uh, in-depth the, the project reports and links to the tools that were developed. Um, for the VCOA ME, you can just Google VCOA ME and it, it'll give you the uh, all the technical documentation, the the, the, the fun science that went into it. Um, and uh, there's a, a, a site called Pavement Stop Pit. So Pavement Stop Pit will take you to all these tools or uh, Pit iRise will. So if you, if you Google those two sites, that'll take you to um, wherever you want to go. Okay. There was, there, there's no like pot of gold that's like this particular thing is coming out on top. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, <laughs> what statements is what you recommend at the end? Oh, for the overlays, what's the golden thickness? Uh, <laughs> or 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 the font, you know, the uh, the right pattern for the, the yeah. So you know, and that's it's I get that question a lot. Um, and so a lot of people are going with the six by six uh, and six inch thick panels. Um, but to, to be honest, that's a lot. So whatever you have underneath, 
is really going to dictate how much you need on top. So there's some areas, and I'm not familiar, I apologize, with, with this area because I'm from the, the Midwest. And so in the Midwest, they had a time where they did fold up asphalt paving. And so you have some pretty robust uh, asphalt layers, or they started out with four, then they added four, you know. So I think the important thing is to know what you have underneath by doing some good coring. And then when you're selecting your, your thickness, you're trading off, you know, if you want to maintain the existing elevation uh, for not having to change your guardrail or ditches, uh, then make sure that you're not milling down to where there might be a construction lift. Uh, so, you know, depending on what you have in site, on site, that's going to really dictate how much you want on top. I would say though, if you're closer to the six inch, five inch, it really doesn't matter as much what you have on because the concrete can pretty much carry uh, the load that you need. So um, when you start getting below uh, like four inches, then you know four and, and below, then you're going to be relying more on that bond. And so you wanna make sure the quality of the asphalt, you know, so you don't have um, durability issues with your asphalt at the top. It's not stripping at the depth you're going to be placing, but um, you know, you, if there's something there to bind to after you mill it. Thank you. I, I did it that time. <laughs> uh, we have an online question from Colin, and this is for Ram. Do you have a database for all the test results generated by the mobile tester, um, either by state or by project? You have the mixture and the material test data that's going to be available this fall uh, in the info materials one. But through LTPP. Yeah, LTPP yeah, yeah, yeah. program. So, but uh, for the field, no, not as of now. We are still trying to build up a database. So, right now, there's no right way of like storing the, this enormous data. It's a continuous profile and it like, has many data points. So, there's no one way to summarize the data. Other questions? All right, well, um, thank you all for your attendance and we have one more round of applause for our presenters.